I got the uh, compound set at uh, six and a half degrees and I'm, I'm going to be plunging in with the uh, cross slide but then I'm going to be uh, or just going to plug in touch off right here on the end and then I'm going to be doing my cuts with the compound just moving it back and forth to get that angle but once I touch off here I'm going to set my uh, compound uh, dial to zero and I'm going to be plunging in oh let me see I got it written down I'm plunging in 185 thousandths Double check my measurements. Just a rough estimate. Okay, I believe we're there. I'll get set up to cut to do the uh, relief cut back here towards the back, and I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I got set up with a radius cutter. I'm gonna cut in to about a hundred and eighty five thousandths and then I'm going to go back into this shoulder about ten thousandths uh, after I get the, uh, my depth cut I'm going to move it back out a little bit to give me some room then I'll come back in and take that ten thousandths face that off Clean these edges up. Get around here where you can see it a little better. I'm going to chamfer this edge and this one back here just a little bit. Clean that up. And then I'll be ready to set up and start doing some threading. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, now I've set up for start cutting your threads. Uh, I think I mentioned before this is a uh, six threads per inch. But it's a double thread so uh, the first thread that I'll be cutting is uh, half of that which be three threads per inch I've got the machine set up for that and I got it set in low gears uh, to cut it low first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch off uh, and set my dial to zero and I gotta end up making a double depth cut of 170 178 I believe about 176 thousandths 
uh, but I'm just going to do a scratch pass and just check. And I don't have a, just to check, make sure I've got the settings right. I don't have a gauge. Uh, this is a steric uh, thread gauge, and it only goes down to four threads per inch. So I've got the six threads per inch. Now basically just check uh, the thread should be uh, these two outer points, and I'll just check and make sure it lines up. If it does, then I'll come back and make the first path to probably start out with a ten thousandths of a cut. I'll drop down to five thousandths for a few passes and then it'll just be a couple thousandths each pass until we get it done. It'll be quite a bit. I won't show the whole thing but I'll show parts of it. Uh, you do a scratch pass. Uh, I just come out just a little ways and just a light scratch to check and make sure I've got the setup right. You do that just in case if the setup ain't right, you haven't really cut much material away, you can get your machine set right and then uh, make another scratch pass if, need, if needed and, uh, and then you'll be good to go. So we'll get started. go in and just scratch off that's right there set my zero That looks good, so we'll go with that. Well, I just seen something that's not right. My tool post is hitting the, uh, I might have to readjust that so we get a good, good touch off. So I'll turn it off, come back and get that set up. Okay, I ended up having to uh, extend my tool bit out a little further than what I'd like, but I had to, do, I have to do that to clear the tool change post from hitting the uh, tail tail stock. So I, I don't have to take uh, the scratch pass now. I know my setting is good but with the realigning this it's not going to follow that same scratch pass that we've done right there. But now I've got to uh, retouch off, reestablish my zero. Set my dial to zero. Set my DRO to zero. Set up for my first pass. First cut's going to be Ten thousandths.
as soon as it gets into the uh, relief cut area, I'll disengage a half nut, back it off and bring it back to the tail. I'm not cutting uh, normal threads. I'm not, instead of feeding in the, uh, since it's square threads, it's only 10 degrees uh, angle on the cutter. I'm doing all my feeding in with the uh, cross slide. Bring in a different view to show you how what I'm doing on the controls. This is the half nut. This is a thread uh, chasing dial. Uh, with it being a whole uh, number thread on this lathe, I can hit any number. So I basically get it, get it set up for the next cut. Dial in another five thousandths. Wait for my number to show up. Engage a half nut. back off set it up for the next cut another five thousand age half now I'm on my last pass. You'll probably see when it gets down in around here that it'll start bouncing. I don't have a uh, follow rest, so I'm going to have to take uh, several spring passes to help clean that up. But the threads are looking pretty good. I'm going to go back. set up for spring pass. I'll be taking the same depth cut here and I'll probably do this a couple times. And that's a total of 176 thousandths uh, depth, double depth before it's the total amount, not just one side. It's 88,000 so depth on one side in a single thread. And you can see that it's uh, it's still cutting even though I did it the same depth. It's because of the uh, pressure of the tool into the metal.
looks good. I'll get ready to set up. Change this around. I'm going to clean this off real good. I'll bring you back when I get ready to set it up for the uh, second thread. Okay, I'm ready to change it out. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I, with a Sharpie, I mark each groove on this drive plate with a number, number one on this one and number two on that one so I can keep track because once I move it over here to number two to cut the second thread uh, and, and cut it down the same depth, I just cut this one. And then when I test it, if it still don't fit or if I gotta take a few more back, uh, a few more uh, thousandths off, I can come back and put it in one, take a couple thousandths pass, swap it out, put it on two, take a couple thousandths pass, check it again. Basically, I'm going <clears throat> to release tail stock. Take it out. And I'm going to blow the ends out, clean the ends off on the dead center. And also on the live center on the tail stock. Clean the hose out. put the dog into the number two slot. Okay, thing set up. And I'll bring my cross slide back over. Set it up for the first pass, which will be ten thousandths. Actually, clean that up. A little Arkansas stone here. Just put it on the top and run it back and forth. Just clean it up, get rid of the burrs or the buildup of the metal from cutting the other thread or the first thread. Oh yeah. Now I'll bring it back in. Mark my depth down so I can keep track as I'm going. If I have to, have to stop and come back, I know where I left off at. That looks good. Put some cutting oil on it. First pass. And it looks like that's in the center. Take 
five thousandths pass of time now. On my final cut, uh, 176 thousandths uh, doubled out. And after I finish this one, I'll do a, a couple of uh, spring cuts. I'll put, put a file to it and we can take her out and test her. Dial back into 176. And this is a spring cut. Okay, it's a starting, but it's a little tight. Put some whey oil in it, the tips. start out with the first pass of 176 which is the original DAP. Just make sure it cleans up and then I'll probably take uh, about three thousandths off of it and then turn it around and do the same thing on thread number two. See how it fits. Yeah, 
she's still tight. So I'm basically going to put it back in, do the same thing, and creep up on it. I'll bring you back once this thing's fitted. I'm going to be doing this exact same thing. Well, I run into a, a issue with uh, cutting the uh, vise screw. Uh, when I got down to cut, cutting the second thread, it, uh, it was getting so, uh, thin as far as the diameter that the pressure of the tool was uh, bowing the part out because of the length of it, the diameter of it, it started rolling over my cutter. And uh, so I, I'm not going to be able to finish it uh, the way it is, but I am going to be able to save this. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is uh, use a follow rest, but I don't have a follow rest for this lathe. And I looked for one and can't find one. Uh, I did contact the uh, Monarch Company, which they're still in business, and yeah, they can provide me one, but end up costing about $5,000, and yeah, I don't want to pay that kind of money. So, uh, basically, I'm going to stop on this project and start a new project, which, which is uh, making a follow rest for it. Uh, end up having a scrap piece of metal here that I'm going to use to uh, make the main base that's going to hold the follow rest. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got to be fairly big because the uh, mounting and what I'll do is I'll show it to you. Take you off here. Back here on the back side of the carriage, it's got a mounting hole here. And then all the way on the front hand, front hand side, you got a mounting hole here. And then come around here on the front side, you have a mounting hole down here on the front edge. And it's a massive piece uh, of the original. I don't have a picture of it. I tried to find one on the web and couldn't. But uh, I have seen one before. Uh, seem like I've seen one on a YouTube channel. So basically what I'm going to have to do is build a piece that uh, mounts to here over the other side. It straddles the cross slide. This thing's got, got to continue to move uh, in and out. So it's going to straddle this, and this piece that comes down through here is basically a brace that makes it stronger so, so when you have pressure against it, it don't roll. And then on the top of the plate that I just showed you up here, I'm going to end up uh, making a piece, and I'm going to put a T-slot in that, and a piece is going to come up where I'm going to have the, uh, the rollers, uh, two rollers that's going to come in and come in contact with the material that will follow along with it. And that will help keep the uh, material from bowing out when you're cutting it. So, so that's what, uh, that's going to be a kind of a pause on uh, finishing this until I get this steady rest uh, built. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to film making this, show you how I come up doing it. Uh, I still got a couple pieces of uh, metal that I'm going to have to to find or purchase to to finish this. Yes, I'm going to have to get me two roller bearings because I'm going to make it a roller bearing uh, follow rest. So when I come up to doing that, uh, I'll uh, show you. I'm going to have to mill this down. It's not perfectly square. It's uh, I don't know what this piece was used for, but it needs to be cleaned up. And then I'm going to have to cut the T slots in it. So I'll. I'll, uh, I'll be making some videos on that and putting it on YouTube so you can see how I do that. So until then, y'all have a good day and thanks for watching.